Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Your boy Del Ray Richardson, uh, platinum songwriter and platinum artist, uh, uh, Straight Game TV. Thank you for coming back and joining me. Um, what I'm gonna address today is I was posed a question in regards to a video that I did on uh, uh, my, 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 my friend's channel, The Art of Dialogue. Go check him out on there, over there, should I say, and, um, and, and check out some of the stuff that I've done and some of the content that uh, he's, he's produced. <clears throat> with various people involved in Tupac, but uh, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to address today was the question that I was posed in reference to the video I did about Tupac uh, not actually being signed to death row, and the question was, um, do I think that Tupac knew that he wasn't signed to death row, and the answer to that question is yes, Tupac knew what was going on, um, and, and there's two parts to that, you know, I'll, I'll get into the to the first part, um, um, the reason why I say that he knew, um, but he didn't really care was because Tupac was the breadwinner for his family. And so being in a maximum security prison, um, you know, and that was his first time in prison. I'm sure it, it was a scary situation for him. You know what I mean? Or, or whether he admitted it, he admitted it or not, but he spoke on some of the things that he saw in there and so on and so forth. But, um, and another thing, the um, like the who shot you, all of those things were just motivating factors for Tupac to to want to make his move and not really uh, worry about all of the other stuff. Not that he didn't care. He did care. But the flip side was this. So what factually and just dealing with the facts of the matter, what basically uh, lets you know or you should know that Tupac knew that he wasn't signed to death row was the fact that when he signed the paper, uh, basically making Suge Knight, his manager, and David Kenner, his lawyer, in which I talked about, when he signed that paper, he knew then, okay, why would I be signing a piece of paper, basically letting Interscope know anything, if I'm signing the death row? So he knew right then and there that he wasn't signing the death row upon his release to pri from prison. So... What most people don't understand is, is yeah, he was aware. But you ask yourself, you probably say, well, why would he do that if he knew? Because, see, and there's the, the, the other side of that, the deal the deal memo, because it wasn't a contract, like most people want to believe. Um, and if you looked at it, it basically said that Suge Knight would have to prepare an agreement, uh, a contract with those uh, deal points uh, in the new contract that he would draw up to transfer Tupac from death row i mean from interscope to death row which never happened it never was gonna happen because jimmy Iovine would never let tupac go um and like i said once again so then you deal with the the three album deal that tupac was uh supposedly uh, uh was supposed to give death row according to that deal memo paperwork um that those three albums didn't just pop out of thin air those were the three albums that tupac still owed Interscope. And so what what Interscope did was they didn't diss Tupac, but there was nothing that they really could do with Tupac. Tupac was like a loose cannon for them. You know, here's this young black male, uh, you know, offshoot of the Black Panthers. Um, very, uh, 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 you know, he was very, in his thinking, he was a very calculated guy, you know what I mean? And he thought that most of the moves that he was making was for a cause and so you can't go against that especially when you're dealing with business and and he's thinking like that so interscope is a corporate entity bunch of white guys you know and they think in money they think in how can they get a return on their investment they are they're should i say they're roi um and so with tupac to bail him out of prison you know um i believe suge came up with the idea but it was a it was a collective idea basically saying like hey you know you bring them over here to death row, you know what I mean? Um, and they continue to market and promote and do what they do, but they needed Suge to be basically Tupac's uh, a chaperone and for, for Suge to basically watch over him. And like I said, all of the money was coming from the same location. Um, and, and this is what, what, what ought to let you know that. It, so the whole time that any artist was on death row, most of the artists that you hear talk about death row talked about never receiving a, a royalty check, right? 
including Tupac. So when Tupac got out of prison, he wasn't receiving, you know, you receive your normal advance or whatever, but he was receiving uh, an allowance. And so therefore, that's something that you, you would never do unless it was structured in a contract. And we know now that Tupac never had a contract with death row. Nobody can show you one. But he did have a contract with Interscope. And, um, and, and on the Art of Dialogues video, I present you with a, a copy uh, of some inserts from that actual contract. So with that being said, when Tupac got out of jail, he knew that he wasn't being signed to death row. And, but what the promise was, was that Suge would then write up a contract, and that was in the deal, that Tupac would now be signed to death row. And like I said, that was never going to happen. Never going to happen. And so most people don't get it, and they say, well, damn, why would you do that? I mean, you put yourself in a maximum security prison. Somebody tell you that they can come get you out, and this is how we're going to do it, and, and so on and so forth. And then that all you thinking is I'm going to be free in a week or two. You know what I mean? Once everything gets settled. Besides, on side of that, basically what people fail to realize is Tupac basically bailed himself out of prison. He just didn't know how to go about the the uh, when you're dealing with a bail bondsman, putting up his intellectual property because people do property bails all the time. You know, they put up the house. You know, to bail somebody out, put up some, a piece of property that they own to bail someone. So basically, Tupac's royalties, it was going to be charged against his, his future royalties. Tupac's royalties was the thing that secured his bail. And so basically, the money that Interscope was putting up, Interscope and Warner Brothers put up to bail him out, along with the bail bondsman company, was basically anchored on the fact that Tupac's royalties would be the, 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 the collateral, basically, to uh, uh, answer that that question if, if he didn't um, show up to court or anything else happened. You know, they would then basically, for the foreseeable future at that time, basically um, control and collect all his royalties. It wasn't like they wasn't getting hit, paid piece of that anyway because his royalty rate at that time was like 12%. So, yeah, Tupac knew, man. He knew that he wasn't actually signed to death row. But the thing that he did know is that he wouldn't get paid his royalties. And like I said, All Eyes on Me was released in like February. And so this is the thing that gave it away. So March, April, May, June, July, August, six months after that, that six months, Tupac was supposed to receive a royalty check. This is not an artist who's doing 25,000 records a week. This is an artist who in three months, the record was 5 million copies sold of a double album. So therefore, um, that's, I remember when it came out, the album was, what, $24? And so so for an average artist, depending on what label was releasing the record, um, excuse me, um, the uh, the regular price of an album was $12. You know, sometimes 16 sometimes 18 It all depends. But Pac's album was like, you know, $24, $24. And so the money that he generated basically would sustain a whole... Uh, record label if you will you know what i mean and so that was the thing that that really woke him up to the fact that oh you know it's never gonna happen it's you know the transition you know what i mean they got me they got me out but you know what i mean that was basically to continue what i was doing and then they got suge to basically be my chaperone to watch over me and so therefore that's when tupac began to plan his exit and then in the whole machiavelli records and most people say wait tupac wasn't gonna leave death row yeah, he was. And and I'll go to what Young Noble from the Outlaw said. He basically said in an interview that um Tupac um was planning on doing a deal with the Outlaws, I believe, and they were going to be signed to Machiavelli Quest Records. And that was Quincy Jones. And most people say, well, what do you mean Quincy Jones? Like, you know, y'all got to stop playing with Quincy Jones because, you know, Quincy Jones had a deal with Warner Brothers, right? Interscope was distributed through Warner Brothers, which... Uh, basically had the deal with death row so it was all once again a little bit more of a, a deal where you know um tupac could feel a little bit safer i don't think he felt safe at death row at all you know what i mean he just was walking it out you know what i mean and so all of the stuff that he was doing he was he was doing you know as as part of his participation and his you know i guess really truly indulging himself 
in the culture that he was involved in at that particular time. And so, once again, and like, like I said, let's not forget, Quincy Jones has the fresh, uh, I'm sorry, Quincy Jones had the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, in which, um, you know, was distributed through Warner Brothers too. Um, Quest Records, Back on the Block compilation, uh, Secret Garden, the song hit, um, that album won a Grammy, you know what I mean? So he was well uh, uh, aware of what hip hop and, and, and the culture was about and could do. And like I said, let's not go to Thriller. You know what I mean? You know, we ain't even going to talk Quincy, Juice, Quincy Jones produced Thriller. And so from that perspective, when you deal with that, um, yeah, Tupac knew what was going on. But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? He just wanted to get out. And like I said, he had to take care of his family. And he had to do what he had to do. And, and you saw how that, that went down, even in that deal memo where he was talking about, you know, his mother needed a house. So that was one of the things that he made sure that he took care of uh, consistently. You know what I mean? So, yeah, um, like I said, it, it, it's a tricky, tricky game. But, yeah, Tupac knew what was going on. But like I said, the only thing that he didn't anticipate was that he, he wouldn't be paid his royalties. And when he found that out, that's when he began to plan his exit from death row. And unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to see that through. And most people think that Suge Knight and all of this other stuff, like, no. You know, it was just one of those situations, like I said, when he was over-involved or over-indulged in that lifestyle that, you know, that he was surrounded around that culture that he was surrounded around, that he made the wrong move with the wrong person at that particular time. Because there were other situations where, you know, basically he got away with doing, you know, stuff like that and beating somebody up or, you know what I mean, taking advantage of somebody based on the power and, and, and being able to outnumber them and, and people being afraid of you. You know what I mean? But uh, with the situation in Vegas, that just wasn't the case. So, um, yeah, like I said, once again, your boy Delray, Straight Game TV, click like, click share. I'm going to be back at you with some more, uh, some more game and some more facts, man. Straight Game.